These little white critters are paramecia. They are large, single-celled ciliates that swim around in the water eating smaller, single-celled organisms such as bacteria and algae. Their macroscopic size and activity level make them a perfect live food for very small fish fry, and lucky for us, they're also very easy to culture at home. Let's get started. Okay, first thing you need to do is find yourself a paramecium culture. Now this is what I got. This came from Carolina Biological Supply, and I think after shipping it cost me about $20. It arrived looking just like this in a little box with instructions and a free pipette, which was nice. If I had to guess, there were probably somewhere between 50 and 75 individual organisms swimming around in here. And that's step one, get that ordered and on the way, and while it's coming, you can prepare the rest of your culture. Next thing you want is a container of at least 500 milliliters. This right here is a one quart deli cup, so it's a little more than that. Should have a lid that you can poke holes in for some ventilation, but won't let bugs or any other pests in there. Paramecium are aquatic, so we're gonna need some water in there. And uh, do not use tank water for this. You could easily contaminate the culture with some other microorganisms that could eat them or outcompete them for food. So you wanna use something sterile. You also might not want to use dechlorinated tap water because depending on where you live, there could be mineral or metal content that might be toxic to them. They're pretty sensitive. Okay, so this is just some store-bought purified water that I feel pretty confident in. I've also used distilled water and it turned out fine. Other ingredients for our culture here are whole wheat grain seeds. Now these need to be boiled for about 15 minutes until they become somewhat soft but not mushy and falling apart. And you're gonna use about six of these per 500 milliliters of water. You also need some yeast. This yeast culture will grow in here. The yeast will eat the grain and the paramecium will eat the yeast. Perfect little cycle, it's very cheap. After you buy yourself a culture, this does not take much continuing investment to keep going. So all we gotta do is take out about six of these. Nice thing is paramecium get used so often for lab experiments, for studies with students that there are many, many instructions you can find online about how to culture these efficiently. And most of them recommend being very sterile about it. And I'm not, but I haven't had a problem yet. We'll see. You don't need a lot of yeast either, because we're gonna get this ready in advance of the culture actually coming. So there will be time for a very small population of yeast to feed off of the grain and then grow. Just a few is fine, just a few grains. And we'll just, Stir that up to let it start spreading around. And we're just gonna let it sit, hopefully for a couple of days before your culture comes. These don't have to be stored in the dark, but they don't like direct sunlight. So you might keep it in a cupboard or up on a high shelf or something where it's not gonna get blasted by the sun. And that's pretty much it. Once your culture comes, you can pretty much directly take these out add them to here and just wait for them to multiply. But what you might wanna do is split this in half, take only half the culture and add it to yours, and then wait a couple of days and make sure that they're still alive. And after two or three days, you should notice a population increase. If they're all dead, they're all gone for some reason, you know something was wrong with this mixture, maybe the water wasn't quite right. And that'll give you a chance to explore a different solution for the remaining half of your culture without having to reorder another one and wait and spend more money. After a week or so, you should have a pretty healthy population of paramecium living in here. And you'll see them, especially in the beginning, kind of floating around at the surface of the water or just under it. And also collecting on the sides of the container and you'll see some white growth and that's just the yeast. You can see an example of it down there. Look around the whole wheat kernels, that white fuzziness. That's yeast and that's what they're eating. So that's a good thing. A Couple weeks after that though, you might not see as many on the side. You might not see them swimming around directly. And you should be able to see them. They're small, but you don't need a magnifying glass to see them with your naked eye unless you have kind of bad vision, which I do. But for most of you, you should be able to see them. Okay, so two, three weeks in, if you don't see them visibly in the water, don't worry. Where they are is underneath those, those kernels down there. Now, if I stir this up, they should just be spinning around in the water. Let me see if I can do that for you. Look at that. It's a tornado. Now, a lot of that cloudiness you see there, 
is yeast, but most of the small particulates are live paramecium. They were just hiding around and underneath the kernels. You see, I knocked off a lot of that yeast. So there is still a very healthy, thriving population in here. These will last you quite a while. And all you gotta do to feed, it's really easy. If they're collecting on the side of the cup, you can just compress your pipette reach down there and just kind of suck them up from around the edge wherever you see a cluster and then collect them in a small container off to the side. Now if you get them settling at the bottom and you have to stir them up like this to see them, pretty much any region is going to be good as another for sucking them up with a pipette and removing them. I suppose you could just dip a small cup in here and grab as much as you want and then go feed it, but I try to be selective. I try to grab just the paramecium and avoid the clumps of yeast. I don't think it's directly likely to harm your fish, but I figure what's the harm in being a little more careful than that. So this brand new culture we just started, I would expect this to be producing a healthy population probably for the next month. Now they won't last forever, but they seem to be pretty durable, at least for me. Now just like the other live foods I've talked about culturing, I think redundancy is very important. So. Even though this is going to last for a while, I have at least six of these going at one time just in case there are crashes in the culture or some other contamination that causes a problem for me. The nice thing is, though, that the materials to do this are so inexpensive that multiplying this process is, is really an insignificant effort in time or in money. Another nice thing is that it's very easy to scale up. This is an experiment I just tried. This is just a little storage tub. I tried adding a great many more wheat kernels to this and just seeing what would happen. And this is actually the container that uh, was used to make the clip in the very beginning of this video. This is just teeming with hundreds of thousands of these things. So if I had a great need for them and I'm about to, I'm ready. These are very, very useful for feeding very small fry. And as you can see, they're very easy to culture. So I hope this can be helpful for you. Good luck, bye.